What's up everybody and today we're going to be talking about the Fire Emblem Direct that just went down. Now before I start this video I just want to say that I am a little bit sick and uh, so I apologize if I sound a little worse than I usually do but I had to talk about this so please bear with me and uh, I might stumble over some stuff but uh, yeah so let's get into it. The Fire Emblem Direct just happened. It was amazing. It was incredible and uh, if you guys didn't already know the Gaiden remakes are confirmed for Fire Emblem 2. I am excited. This is what I'm talking about, Nintendo. This is what I'm talking about, Intelligent Systems. Now, at first when I saw this, I was like, who are these characters? Are these new characters? Because, you know, this is like a new trailer. Almond and Celica are looking different. This is an adorable little cutscene. They're just talking about the story of the Myla and Duma. But then when I heard about, you know, when I heard Myla and Duma, I was like, oh, this is Fire Emblem 2. This is Almond and Celica. How can I not know? <laughs> uh... That was your first mistake, Celica, saying that nothing will ever come between you, but you already know something is. A nice picky promise right there. But man, <laughs> I'm excited. Now, I've never played the Gaiden game. I've never played the original Gaiden. Uh, the only Japanese Fire Emblem game, that, or Japanese only Fire Emblem game that I've played was the Binding Blade, and I still haven't beaten that game. But this is a treat. This is a treat to all Fire Emblem fans, especially the old school fans who have played Gaiden. Uh, and now... You know, from discussing with people, with friends that are more experienced than I am in Fire Emblem, they've said, they've told me that it was really good. I mean, look at this. Alm is looking nice. Celica, look at the nice art right there. It's nice and polished. I like the art. But basically what I was saying is uh, when I was talking to people about uh, Gaiden and uh, how they're really happy about the remake. Now, they were saying that, you know, it's about, basically it's about damn time for a remake. <laughs> uh, I kind of, I didn't expect this per se. I mean, I did. I wouldn't say I expected it, I, I would say that I wanted it. Not this game specifically, but I wanted a remake or a sequel of any kind for an older Fire Emblem game. And we got what we wanted, I will take this to the bank. Um, Gaiden remakes, now, because, I mean, I didn't I didn't want uh, a brand new Fire Emblem game made from scratch, because Fates, I liked Fates, but, like I said, it's damn time for a remake. And they already, they already announced that a Fire Emblem game for the Switch is coming out, but that's coming out. 2018 but right now a remake is in order and they came through and gave us the remake and this is a treat to all Fire Emblem fans especially like I said to the people who have played Gaiden the old school veteran players this is awesome uh, I wouldn't consider myself consider myself a veteran player I've only been playing for about you know several years now but I wouldn't consider myself new to the series uh, like I said I, the Binding Blade is the only Fire Emblem game that was only released in Japan that I played so this will be a new experience for me playing Gaiden and this is great overall, because this is a treat to the old fans, and the newer fans, especially the newer fan base, can be can play the older games now through a remake, uh, and you know a revised, updated, improved uh, remake, hopefully. And this game is looking. I like I like how they're doing here. They're just talking about the story. It's just straight up Fire Emblem. What what it used to be. I mean, it still is, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, it looks like, from what I'm seeing, it looks like they're staying true to the original Gaiden. Gaiden, Gaiden, I don't know how to pronounce it. I could be butchering the name. I don't know. I'm just going to call it Gaiden. But it's renamed Fire Emblem The Shadows of Valencia Echoes. So, The Shadows of Valencia is here. Valencia is the continent which FE2 takes place. Now, I'm going to lower the volume of what Yuri is saying here because I don't want to, uh, like make it sound bad while well, my commentary but yeah Fire Emblem Gaiden from what I've heard it was very influential to the series and uh, there was I think it was the first one with the overworld map I believe I'm sure I could be wrong but what I'm hearing from people is that it also didn't have it didn't have weapon durability just like fates and I mean look at it this is it was pretty good for its time and now we're gonna have it re remade I mean look look at this you got the night, <laughs> and now it's gonna be remade. Look at that! Oh, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. Whew! I like it. It's another game. It's another final game for the 3DS. But like I said, we're having one for the Switch, so it's no big deal. Alm is looking nice. Alm and Celica, the two main protagonists. Also, what I heard from people too is now that it's for. Oh, this character design's uh, made by Hidari. That's cool. But uh, from what I heard from people, they were saying that. This remake could be the best Fire Emblem remake. <laughs> I mean, there isn't many Fire Emblem remakes. I think the only other Fire Emblem game that's been remade was Marth's Games. And, 
Shadow Dragon and New Mystery of the Emblem. So this is like the second one. At least what I can remember. But you got the nice overworld map. The game page is looking clean. I'm liking it. I'm, look at the dungeon. Is that in the original? I don't think it is. I don't know. I could be wrong. But that's looking cool. Oh man. Super excited for this game. But I'm pretty sure people who have played Gaiden are even more excited for this game. And just to see the potential of what it could do. You know what they can improve upon. Uh, because you know that was that game came out a long time ago. So now that you have another 3DS and it's being you know picked up again th that shows that the developers they didn't forget about the old fans and they're giving love to the older games now with this and the way they named it echoes this could open up like potential for even more Fire Emblem remakes um, like I said I've only played Binding Blade that's the only Japanese only game the Japanese only Fire Emblem games include Fire Emblem 1 Fire Emblem 2 which is right here Gaiden uh, Fire Emblem 3 Fire Emblem 4 Fire Emblem 1 and 3 have Mars, Fire Emblem 4 has uh, Sigurd, uh, Fire Emblem 5 I'm pretty sure has Sealift, and Fire Emblem 6 has Roy, and then the first one in America was Fire Emblem 7. So those six games pretty much uh, can be remade, and it, and what it's looking like, they might do that, <laughs> which I'm really excited. I'm, I'm now wondering how they're going to do it, because, uh, you know, as you can see on the screen, the Fire Emblem game for the Switch, the new, brand new one, is coming out in 2018, so that's coming next after uh, Echoes comes out. Now, being having remakes and Nintendo is the new at all. I mean, look at Zelda. Zelda remakes games a lot. Pokemon, especially. I think Pokemon was like the first one, of the first to do it. Um, but uh, and here's Final Warriors. <laughs> just, they just showed basically a little bit more for or a little more gameplay of Crom. But honestly, it wasn't as much as I thought it would be. But you know, it's a spin-off. It's not the main series game, so I'm glad they they at least showed a lot of information for Gaiden. But uh, they do show a little more gameplay, but anyways, back to my point. They could do the remakes just like Pokemon. I mean, you have the main series game, so like, for example, you have X and Y, and then uh, after X and Y was Oras, the third gen remakes, and then you have a main series game again. So th with this, they can have Fates, which is the main series game that was new, and then you have a remake, and then a the, the new one again, and then another remake. Who knows what they'll do. So what I would like to see is after Fire Emblem Switch, they could make Fire Emblem 4 remake, and then a Fire Emblem 5 remake, and then eventually a Fire Emblem 6 remake, because, uh, like I said, uh, I'd love to see, I mean, like I said, I played Binding Blade, and I'd love to see Roy a lot better in that game. Um, honestly, a lot of the Fire Emblem games could use some polish, you know? I mean, I mean, what's the, I mean, why not remake them? There's really no reason not to remake the older Fire Emblem games. Like I said before, it's a treat to the older fans, and it will get the newer fans in and more acquainted to the games because a lot of the newer fans have only played the newer games, especially the 3DS titles. So this is great. I love it. I love Gaiden. Oh man, I'm gonna love that game. That game's gonna be really fun. And uh, also, Hi and uh, also, Fire Warrior is gonna be on the 3DS as well, just like uh, Hyrule Warriors Legends. So that's cool. Uh, unfortunately, there wasn't much information about it. Just showed a little more gameplay with Chrom and his critical hit animations and stuff like that. But it is coming out this fall. Uh, yeah, that's a good, that's a good time to, to release it. I honestly thought maybe it would go to 2018, but I guess not, so I'm just going to pause here. But basically, uh, guiding is really cool, and uh, I've said that a lot. I probably sound like a broken record at this point. Uh, I just want to wrap it up before I get into this, but guiding is awesome. It's going to be a treat to the older fans, and I hope they continue to remake more Fire Emblem games in the future. Um, this is probably a stretch but I also hope they remake Mark's games I know they already remade his games on the DS but they weren't as popular and they could have been done a lot better so basically uh, what, when I'm, when I'm, what I'm looking for when there's a sequel or a follow-up game or a remake you want to keep it true to its roots right you want to keep it true to its roots but at the same time you want to make it new because if it's the exact same shit then what's the point <laughs> so if there's any kind of remake, prequel, sequel, you want to keep it true to its roots, the same, but you also want to make it different. So that's that's what it looks like with Gaiden, with Echo's remake. Uh, they're keeping true to the old formula, to what Gaiden brought at the time, but of course they're going to add new features. I mean, probably Phoenix Mode is going to be in the game to have newer fans play it. Uh, oh, I, I don't know, maybe they'll make it like closer to the original than I thought, but they're probably going to mix the modern features and the old school classic features together um, with four remakes so that's what I'm looking for 
if they remake uh, more Fire Emblem games in the future. So that is awesome. I'm really happy. Now, a lot of people didn't expect it, honestly. Didn't expect the Gaiden remake. But people knew that they wanted one. But they just didn't expect it. So that is great. And now we're going to go into the next game, uh, which is the final part of the presentation, pretty much. Fire Emblem Heroes. Now, it's the Fire Emblem Mobile game that we've been hearing about. And, uh, I mean, I mean, I'm pretty excited for it. I am. But, I mean, it's obviously not a main series game. We got this new character for the game. Looking like Krom's nephew or something. <laughs> and this chick. Um, now, I, I'm not a big, you know mobile gamer I don't really play any games on my phone but like I've told you guys in the past that guy looks like a versus brother or something <laughs> I don't know maybe it's just me but I mean look at this is that a non coast I don't know he's got a gun the we got fire with guns now uh look at this trailer man it reminds me of the the fates trailer honestly I mean look at this I was like ooh Xander and Lucina uh, people are thinking, oh, maybe this is a new game, but it's the mobile game. Camilla and Krom coming out. Ooh, I like the art style, too. <laughs> there's Lissa, there's Ryoma, there's Hinoka, there's Takumi, there's the new guy. Oh, man, this is looking intense. The girl, this new girl. Um, Fire Emblem Heroes, the first game on the mobile, or first Fire Emblem game on mobile. Now, from what I heard, this game is exactly, or the gameplay is just like this other game called Phantom of the Kill. I think that's what it's called. So if you want to know what the game is going to be like, play that game. But this is a really cool concept because not only can I play Fire Emblem on the go. I mean, obviously we had 3DS games, but we could play it on our phone with this brand new original story just for this game. Now, I mean, this game is not going to be judged just like original, I mean, a main series game because obviously it's not a main series game. It's just a mobile game, but it's going to be awesome. I mean, I'm going to give it a, a shot, obviously. I think it's going to have it has a lot of potential to be really awesome. Look at Marth. Look at the art style. <laughs> I like this art style. There's Lucina. Look, look at the art style, man. I like it. But I'm definitely going to give it a shot. Oh, man, look, look at all the Final Six characters. You got Clarine there. You got Florina there. You got Church. You got Gaius. There's Lena. Look at all the potential. There's so many characters going to be in this game. But I'm definitely going to give it a shot. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't become... People are fearing that it's going to be a pay-to-win game, basically. Or, I guess it's called pay-to-win, where you basically have to pay. Because that's how a lot of mobile games are, right? They're free. And then, if you really want to get into it without spending hours and hours on end, or, like, taking forever, you have to pay for stuff. And people don't really like that, I guess. So, I mean, it's understandable. I guess one example is, like, Clash of Clans. That game, uh, you know, it's free, but, you know, there's an online shop, and you could pay for stuff, and if you don't pay, I mean, it's possible to play through the game without paying, but it takes a long time. <laughs> so, maybe that game, this game will be like it, but I mean, there's nothing stopping you from getting the game, actual game, because it's free, and it looks really cool. I mean, look at this. Obviously, the map is pretty small, because it's on a mobile phone, at least what we can see right now, but... I mean, look at the game. You got Olivia moving. You've got Effie moving. There's a ton of characters in this game. It's not just Fates and Awakened characters. You got my girl Minerva. You got Cecilia from Binding Blade. I think Shireen is the new girl. You got my nigga Saizo. <laughs> you got Nino. Uh, man. From Fire Emblem 7. And Gwendolyn, which is actually her translated name, I guess, from Binding Blade. Because in Binding Blade, her name's Wendy. Uh, well, at least on the translation patch, it is. <laughs> so... Fire Emblem Heroes is definitely cool. Now, when they get to the later parts of the voting process, that's the thing that really is really cool. Because this game actually comes out pretty soon. It comes out next month, I believe, for the Android and the iPhone. But Android gets it first. I'm an iPhone user, so I guess I'll have to wait. But uh, this will be really cool. I'll be able to play Fire Emblem on the go. Uh, the last mobile game I really played some sometimes was Pokemon Go. But at the end of the day, I'd rather play the real Pokemon games. And I feel like it will be like this for this game, but I think this game has potential. I mean, it looks fun. So, I mean, there's upgrading, you can summon people, there's the voting thing that will happen later on. Um, so, I mean, let, let me guys let, let me know what you guys' thoughts are on this, this whole thing, especially the mobile game. Because, I mean, they did spend, I feel like, most of the direct 
talking about the mobile game, but I mean, I guess it makes sense because it's the first mobile game we've ever had for Fire Emblem, so uh, you got the orbs, uh, you can upgrade your attributes, so it's it's got a lot of, I mean, it's simple, I guess, but it's also got some stuff you can do, so uh, it looks fun, I'm going to give it a shot, uh, so I mean, the voting thing, at first I was confused <laughs> for the voting thing, I mean, I know it's not showing right now, it's probably going to come up soon, but the voting thing where you can vote for your characters to be featured. I first thought it was voting for the character to be into the game. Actually, I'm just going to skip ahead to that part if I can. Let's see. There's Long Q popping up. And then later on, he tries to get Navarre. There's Lin. Ligan is looking nice as usual. Lady Lindis. Azura. Of course, Robin's in there. Let me just skip to the voting part. But at first, basically, I thought that the voting was... Like, you vote for the characters to get into the game. But I was thinking, like, well, from this gameplay, from the Direct, it showed a ton of characters. So, I mean, those characters have to be in the game already. I mean, it's not like we have to vote for Marth or Ike or Lindis or any of the, fa the favorites to get into the game. I was confused at first. I was like, why would I vote for Marth if he's already going to be in the game? <laughs> but I guess I misheard. Uh, I didn't hear it in entirely. But basically, they're going to... Whoever gets the most votes is going to have like a special event, probably have some special costumes or something like that, whoever wins. So, I mean, all the characters that they showed on the website for Fire Emblem Heroes voting are going to be in the game, from what it seems like. I mean, I hope so. I was scrolling through last night, and I've, the first character I voted for was uh, Ephraim, my boy from Sacred Stones. And I don't know who I'm going to vote for today, but uh, I think there's like 13 days to vote. I think you could vote for different people. I hope so. I mean, <laughs> I mean probably. But, uh... What's really funny is there's some unique characters that you wouldn't expect. Like, in Awakening, you can vote for Cervantes, and he's, like, one of the enemy generals for Valm. Uh, in Radiant Dawn, there's Amy. <laughs> and Amy's a little girl adopted. She's the adopted daughter of Largo <laughs> in Radiant Dawn, and she's just a little girl. I don't think you can even play as her. I could be wrong, but I remember her from when I played Radiant Dawn. It's, like, it's funny to see that she's a potential character. Amy is a little girl. That's hilarious. <laughs> Oh, man. I think you can vote for Merlinus as well for Final Fantasy VII. You know, I might just vote for the the obscure characters. Because, obviously, people are going to vote for their favorites, the most unique characters. Like, people are going to vote for Camilla and Tharja and Lin and, you know, everyone they like. But I, I might vote for the the more... I mean, I guess Ephraim's popular, but... I don't know, maybe I'll vote for the more unique characters. Just to see, you know, them get their sign. Because, I mean, if you pick some obscure character like... Barst from the original, then you're probably not gonna. He's probably not gonna win, but I mean, it, it's just fun to be able to vote. And also, like the characters in this game have like different kinds of costumes. So you saw Lucina; she had like a little more revealing uh, costume there. Available February two on iPhone and iPad soon. So yeah, this is the voting part of the game, and I really like this because people they basically get to rally whoever they want. It's really cool. I mean, it's like kind of like the Smash Ball. Everyone's like, who are you going to vote for? Uh, choose your legends, basically. If you guys want to vote, I'll leave the website link to the, in the description. So, yeah, get your votes in. So, the the most votes for the hero and heroine will be featured. Or Tiki, Seelif, Roy, Lindis, Erica, Ike, Krom, Corin, Navar, Long Hugh. And there it is, Niles. I don't know why Niles is there. So you could basically choose from a majority of the roster of every game. So like, it's not every single character, I don't think, but it's most of them, or like at least the popular ones. So you know, they gave you a good variety and a good you know variety of options. So uh, pre-registrations right there. So I'm excited for this game, honestly. So that is the direct. It was 19 minutes long, a uh, good amount, I'd say. You know, nothing too short, nothing too long. But yeah. Oh man, I'm, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. And honestly, this year, 2017, people are saying it's the year of Fire Emblem. And, you know, I think it might be. I mean, it's not officially called the year of Fire Emblem. But it might be. I mean, look, we have four Fire Emblem games coming up. We've got Gaiden. We've got, I mean, I keep saying Gaiden. Echoes, <laughs> the Shadows of Valencia remake. That's coming up this May. We've got... Fire Emblem Warriors, which is coming out this fall. And then we've got the mobile game that comes out next month. We've got Fire Emblem Heroes. And then we've got the one on the Switch. So, like, four games 
that are coming up. I mean, I guess Fire Emblem Switch isn't coming this year, but still, three games this year? Fire Emblem is on... I mean, it's been on the rise for a while, but now I, I comfortably say, or confidently say, that Fire Emblem now is one of Nintendo's, you know, big hitters. They're, you know, one of their <laughs> bigger franchises at this point, and I'm happy it is, and I'm really happy that they remade Gaiden. Really happy, because I'd be slightly disappointed if there was a new, brand new game for the 3DS. I mean, like I said, there is the one for the Switch, but that's not until next year. I'm really glad they remade Gaiden. I hope they remake Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy V, Final Fantasy IV. And eventually, someday, I mean, I feel like it won't happen because they already did. I, I talked about this earlier, that they would remake Mars games uh, better. And, I mean, Final Fantasy XII, what I heard, is really good, and I would love to play that game, the new Mystery of the Emblem. Because the only Marth, the only game that I played that had with Marth or his game, the only game that I played from Marth was Shadow Dragon, and I beat that game and it was really fun. But uh, I would love to play FE12 because it looks a lot better. But unfortunately, Final 12 is Japan only. So with this, they are basically making the Japan only games localized with a remake or through a remake, and I love it. I mean, there's really no reason for Nintendo to not remake them. You know, make it accessible for newer fans. Give the older fans something, a treat. You know, give them something new. Give them something nostalgic. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> it's going to be a great time. I'm so happy. This is amazing. This is so this is so good for Nintendo. Fire Emblem is, is rising. It's up there. It's going to have a great year, hopefully. And the Switch is coming out. It's, it's Honestly, it's a year for Nintendo. I mean, Nintendo has a lot of stuff that they have going on for them. And I really hope it works out. So, like I said, leave you guys, leave your guys' thoughts in the comments. Uh, tell me who you're voting for in the Fire Emblem Heroes, if you're going to get the game. I mean, some people thought, or not thought, but some people don't really care for mobile games, so they're just like, eh, meh, but whatever, you know. But I mean, I'm going to give it a shot, because, I mean, I don't really have anything downloaded on my phone in terms of games. So, I'll give Fire Emblem Heroes a shot. Uh, I'm really excited for Gaiden, Gaiden, Echoes. I keep calling it Gaiden, but it's called Echoes now. Uh, so, yeah, Fire Emblem, and Fire Emblem Warriors, of course. <laughs> so, yes, yes, this is what I'm talking about, Nintendo. I'm so happy that they went back and gave the game some love and remade it. That's just amazing to me. Because, I mean, I know veterans, they felt like, uh, you know, they've kind of forgotten about the older fans, and they were kind of nervous of how the, the series was going, and that's, that is a whole topic by itself. That's a whole other topic. But, uh... I mean, I was slightly, too, a little concerned of how, you know, the series was going. But now that we have this remake, I mean, like I said before, it's a mix between modern and new stuff. So we don't know if there's going to be face pitting, which I hope there's no face pitting. But it's, like I said, it's, it looks like it's staying true to its roots. And, I mean, from what I saw in the trailer, there's no avatar. Uh, so it's just straight up Fire Emblem 2, polished, you know, cleaned up, improved, revised, whatever you like to say. Uh... It's going to be great. I mean, even if they do add, like, face painting or whatever, I mean, it's, it's never a feature I cared for anyway in Fates, so... Uh, but, you know, like I said, as long as they stay, stay true to the roots, but, you know, they extend their branches. <laughs> that's a good... I think that's a good uh, metaphor for that. You know, stay true to your roots, but you want to branch out more because, you know, it's the modern time. It's 2017. You know, give it an update. Give it a... Give it an improvement, so... Yeah, that's my thoughts on it. Uh, hopefully I didn't miss anything, uh, basically. So that's me rambling. <laughs> so like I said, thank you guys for watching and leave your thoughts down below and uh, tell me who you voted for. It's The game's coming out pretty soon, so I don't know who I'm going to vote for. I already voted for my boy Fframe, so maybe I'll vote for... Uh, maybe I'll just vote for Marth once, so hopefully he'll get something special. But yeah, thank you guys for watching, and uh, Fire Emblem is coming through. <laughs> See you guys.